Heavenly Father, we are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful for your kindness. This is the first Sunday that we're gathering together in this brand new year of unstoppable multiplication. We're grateful. Father, we look back and we're thankful for your hand. We're thankful for your grace. We're thankful for what you've done. This morning, one of the things we've come to do is just to, with a heart that is full, is to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for what you did in individual lives. Last year was really a year of laughter and exploits. We are grateful, oh God. Thank you for what you did for us as a church family. We are grateful, oh God. And thank you for what you are yet going to do. We are grateful, oh God. We are grateful, oh God. Lord, in the same spirit of faith, we pray about wine press. We're believing you, oh God. We're believing you, oh God. 100,000 testimonies in this wine press. We believe in you, oh God, that people, you've done it before. Last year, wine press people came in that couldn't have a child. People came in that were set back financially and your power broke the bondage. The same way we're saying in this wine press, you will multiply it. You will do way much more. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Please, you may have your seat. If you've not said hello to someone close to you, help me shake someone on your right and your left. Wish them a happy new year and welcome them to church. Wish them a happy new year and welcome them to church. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Please, today, make sure you eat all you can because fasting starts tomorrow. Today, make sure you eat all you can. Go to a nice restaurant. Go to a nice buffet. Start, fasting starts what? Tomorrow. So today, eat all you can. It doesn't make it better, actually. It kind of makes it worse. <laughs> the reason why is that when you eat all you can, then you expand your your stomach capacity then you get very hungry the more you eat the more hungry you become i hope you know that yeah so you know the way to do it is just to start the fast today praise god hallelujah because the way it works that the more you eat the more hungry you become the less you eat the less hungry you become glory to god and um i'm going to i'm going to really give us instructions all of our churches are joining um so watch out for my video on youtube especially i'm going to talk about how to fast I'm going to talk about, and if you don't subscribe to the YouTube channel, you can get out your phones right now and just subscribe so that when the notification comes up, you can see it. I'm going to talk about three things. How to fast. I'm going to talk about how to write your prayer, prayer point connected to your goals. And the third one will be how to write your letters of congratulations. We're going to, no matter what you've written, the Bible says forget the former things. We're going to clear out all the old prayer requests and begin to bring new prayer requests at this time. So you're going to put it together and do that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. Uh, yes. So, of course, we know that wine press is starting when? The 24th. So, all of you that are leaders in church, someone says, who is the leader? In our church, anybody that leads somebody else, either you're a cell leader, you're an HOD, you are a leader in our church. We're having the International Pastors and Leaders Conference. We have probably more than 200 or 300 people, 200 people coming from outside Lagos, to attend the International Pastors and Leaders Conference. So all of us are here, we need to attend. So it will be holding from Monday to Wednesday. It's morning and evening session for all of our leaders. And I'm saying so because all of you that are leaders, you need to make out that time and be there for the International Pastors and Leaders Conference. And the second thing is that Wine Press starts on the Wednesday evening. Because, yeah, Wine Press starts Wednesday evening. Praise the Lord. I don't know if you saw the video. If they have the video, they can play it. Yesterday, I, I was, all of us went out together and we you know, evangelizing, we were, you know, we were evangelizing, we were sharing flyers with people about wine press, and it was just a lovely, I posted some of it. I posted it not because you need to see, because I do that without you seeing it. I was hoping to post it to inspire you to be like, you need to take out the flyers. On the 20th, we have another, um, what do you call it, mass rally. After this service, um, we need, because we're expecting about 20,000 people, we need really a lot of volunteers. We need about 8,000, and you know, we need about 8,000. So after the service, people are going to walk up to you and ask you to tell them where you can serve. Even if you're not a worker, during this wine press, volunteer to join the mass choir. Where's Ade? Is, I saw Ade earlier on. Ade, our goal is for the choir. Where is he? Where's Darlington? 
Where? Just get them for me. Our goal is that we want the choir to be 1,000. We want the choir to be a mass choir, 1,000. Someone say, I can't sing a lot. Don't worry. We'll take the voice like that. You know, we'll take the voice like that. So we want the choir to be 1,000. So 1,000 1, people singing. We need about 8, you know, we need about 8,000 of us serving in Austrian, in car park. Because when you have 20,000 people, you're talking about 10,000, 10,000 there about kind of cars, that kind of thing. And the good thing also is that there are buses. So there are buses all over Lagos. We're using 110 buses right now, BRT buses that can convey about 5,000 people every day. Hallelujah. Yeah. You know, so that in case your friend wants to come from work and is wondering, how do I get back? He can just join the bus to get back. It's a free bus to get back. You know, that, that kind of... But the key thing is that we're depending on all of you. So this is what you need to do right now. Everybody bring out your phones. You know, go to my page on Instagram or YouTube or Facebook. Download the, what they call it, wine press flyers and put it on your status and on social media. If you don't do that, I will not go ahead. Praise the Lord. Yeah. So everybody bring out your phones. I'm not going to, so say, we'll do it later. That's, the, as a leader, you know something, the way things are not done is people say they will do it what? Later. Except those of you that are not on social media, I understand. But if you're on social media or maybe you didn't bring your phone, some of you leave your phone in the car for concentration, I understand that. But all of you that have your phones there, which is majority of us, Get out your phones, download. The, so you can go to my page and, you know, just copy out the flyer. You can go to my Twitter, copy out the flyer on Facebook, copy out. And two things, put it on your, on your WhatsApp status, on your Telegram status, and on your social media accounts. Hallelujah. So every other day, you will get reminders as different flyers comes up. What does that do for you? It makes it very easy to invite your friends. It makes it very easy to invite your friends to church. Glory to God. I said glory to God. Hallelujah. So fasting starts tomorrow. Watch out for the video. And please remember that, of course, now that we're fasting, if you've been missing an LP, if you fast without praying, it's a waste of time. So if you're missing an LP, this is the time to what? To make sure that 6.30 a.m. tomorrow, you are joining the prayers. And the prayers have just been fantastic. I mean, anywhere I go, anywhere, anywhere I go, I mean, from poly, top politicians to just normal people. Everybody has amazing things to say about the prayers. And don't join the prayer. Help me engage your friends and invite them to join the prayer. I don't want people to enter this year depressed, unhappy, and all of that. So help engage your friends and help engage them to join the prayers. Glory to God. Are you done doing that? I was talking to them about our 1,000 man choir. Are we at half already? Okay, we're almost there. So we're having a 1,000 man choir, which is just going to be lovely every night glory to god hallelujah all right i'm gonna hurry so how many of you are posted let me see if you are posted so leaders i want to show you something because the other churches are watching and um, the campus pastor stand up and check if your members are posted in your campus because you know i'm not there physically so they think that i can't see them but i can see them through your own eyes praise the lord so if you're posted let me see with your hands let me see excellent if your neighbor has not posted ask your neighbor what why have you not posted So take one more minute and post. Take one more minute and post. Take one more minute and post. All of you watching online, the same thing. You can download it and do that. All right. So this morning, I want to talk to you about a very powerful concept. And what I will do this morning is to really talk. Can I get water? Is to talk about um, the word of the year and what we have to do about the word of the year. So this morning, I'm going to really do that. I want you to turn your Bible to the book of First Thessalonians chapter 5 in verse 19 and verse 20. First Thessalonians chapter 5 in verse 19 and 20. And I'm talking about becoming unshakable by activating the prophetic word, the power in the prophetic word so this morning i will really talk about prophecy and the reason why is this when the purpose of a thing is unknown abuse is inevitable this morning what i intend to do is this to explain to you why in certain season a prophetic word will come about that season and what you can do to make sure that the prophetic word becomes actualized in your life so that you are not sabotaged 
in any way at all. So we're going to look at the fundamental principles of prophecy and we're not going to talk about how to turn the prophecy to reality in our lives. First Thessalonians chapter 5 in verse 19. The Bible says, quench not the spirit. Now, if you understand the scriptures, that scripture is very confusing because the question is, can you quench the spirit? Can you stop the spirit? What the Bible is saying here is this. Do not, the, the Passion Translation and the Message Translation say this way, do not suppress the spirit. What does that mean? Do not suppress the operation of the spirit in your life. When it comes to the spirit, there are some key words that were used. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, quench not the Holy Spirit. What is the difference? They seem similar, but they're very different. Grieving the Holy Spirit is active. What is active? You do something that the spirit has forbidden. So, you can tell that the spirit of God is nudging you not to go this way. Then you go that way. You, you go against it. That's grieving. When he says, quench not the Holy Spirit, and this is what most Christians are guilty for. This is what most Christians are guilty of. When he says, quench not the Holy Spirit, it's not something you are doing. It's something you are not doing. Quench not the Holy Spirit. Talk about you ignoring. Talk about you suppressing. Talk about you neglecting the influence of the Spirit. I'll give an example. Samuel said something very powerful. He said, may I not sin by not praying for you. Did you hear that? He said, may I not sin by not praying for you. That means that when that engagement is there to pray, you can now sin by not praying. Why? You suppress, you ignore, you neglect the prompting of the Spirit. And I'm saying so to you because... A lot of people will not necessarily move in a way that will grieve the spirit. But what they will do is that there will be a suppression. And it happens all the time. As I'm talking to you right now, for example, we have a commanded fast that starts tomorrow. And you just say, well, what am I praying for? This and this. And you ignore it. And what you don't realize is that you are quenching the spirit. Sometimes this happens a lot in giving. Something happened recently. And something happened I was praying. And God said, that thing you are praying about, give a thanksgiving offering now. Give one million right now. This happened to me just last week. He said, give a million right now. And I'm like, but I don't have to give for God to answer my prayers. He said, but that's not what he's saying, give. I can choose to walk away from it, but I can choose to walk in it. As simple as this, God looks at you and say, invite your friend for a meeting. Invite him for one prayer. Pray for that person and you ignore it. Those are classic examples of quenching the spirit and the bad thing about quenching the spirit is this when you quench the spirit for long enough you will not sense the spirit again hallelujah do you know that people that eat a lot of sugar do not know that sugar is sugary do you know what i mean i mean you see some people eat i remember when i was in the boarding school someone would take a bowl of rice uh, a bowl of gary put loads of sugar in it you're like wow you're literally eating sugar but the person cannot taste what you are tasting. And the reason why is that after a long time, your taste buds will change. The same thing in the spirit of God, with the, in the spirit realm. After a long time of quenching God, your taste bud will never recognize it again. Because it will register in your mind that this is not something I pay attention to. So don't bring it to my attention. Let me give you a practical example. There are men that look at women. Amen. When it is passing by, they just say, "Yeah." No matter, you just their head. Just, mm. The reason why they always look at women is that their mind always tells them there's something you love to look at that is around you. Look, because they've trained their mind to recognize it. So sometimes I'm talking to someone and I see his eyes move. I'm like, so I follow the eye, so I can see the subject. So I now wonder to myself, how come I did not notice what he was saying? The reason why is that over time I've trained my mind by to ignore such things. So if that thing passes in front of me, my mind will not bring it to what? Remembrance. It will not bring it to recognition that something has happened to me. And I'm saying it because 
this year, one of the vow you must make before the Lord. Listen, nothing changes the new year. It's decision that changes destiny. Uh, let, nothing changes in a new year. It's decision that changes destiny. I'm saying so because as excited as you are about this year, you need to make some quality decision that will change your destiny. And those decisions are not going to be based on emotions. This week now, the gym will be packed. Next two weeks, it will become empty again. Because people are moving by emotions. You must get to a point where like, I don't have to feel what I have to do. I stand up and do it. This morning now, ah, first Sunday of the church. There's no difference between first Sunday and last Sunday. You have made this special to yourself. You are the one that will tell yourself, there's no Sunday, I will not be in church. Because the word of God says, we should not neglect the assembly of one another. This year has started. How many Bible studies have you missed? How many days of prayer have you missed? Glory to God. So let's go back to reading the scripture now. The Bible says this. Very powerful. And I want to really close early so that we can pray. So anyway, I close. So let me say this for those online and in the life center. Anyway, I close, go to the next service. I will continue from there. Because it, uh, it, it could be a lengthy message. So back to First Testament chapter 5 verse 19. He said, quench not the spirit, verse 20, and this I'm going to. How do you quench, how do you suspress the spirit? He says, you suspress, so you remember, it's the same thoughts. He said, by despising not prophecy. One of the ways the spirit of God is quenched is that people despise prophesying. And people have the reason why they despise it. Number one, people have used it to manipulate people. People have said the wrong thing. But the spirit of God is saying to us, that as Christians, we must not despise prophesying. So what is prophesying? 1 Corinthians chapter 14 in verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 in verse 3. Maybe Amos chapter 14 in verse 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 3. The Bible says, He that prophesied, and this is what prophecy does. When someone comes into a service and calls a man out and says, beside his wife and say ha ah, i see that you have three girlfriends that person is not operating with the spirit of god first of all does god remember forgiving sins then number two the purpose of prophecy is edification not embarrassment even if you saw that that it did this god was saying it in the context of something else not in the context of embarrassment he says, and he that prophesies speaketh unto men to edification. Edification means building up to exhortation. Exhortation means encouragement. And number three is to comfort, to bring you peace. So when you have, when you hear true Bible prophecy, and this is the issue I have with people that always see things and all they see is negative things. This is the problem I have. Every time, ah, I saw that you died. Ah, I saw that your mother died. I saw that you lost a pregnancy. I saw that people rose against you and you had cancer. I say, excuse me, sir. In all your sin, you didn't see me as a billionaire. Excuse me, sir. In all your sin, you didn't see promotion. Why are you seeing evil things? Someone says, I have the spirit, the gift of knowing demons. There's no gift of knowing demons. The gift is called discerning of spirits. Spirits are both angels and demonic spirits. If I can discern demons, I can discern angels. Are you here, somebody? This is a problem I have with sin. So, when I see someone that is always seen negative, I understand that his mind has polluted his gifts. Because what has happened to him that he has trained himself to always see negative. Some of you, you always have bad dreams. Your mind has affected your dream. If God speaks through you through your dreams, the same way you have dreams that will warn you, you will also have dreams that will lead to breakthroughs. That is a balanced gift. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So I'm showing you what prophecy does. So the question is this. Why is prophecy important? So... First Thessalonians tells us that we should not despise prophecy. Amos chapter 3 verse 7 is the last. It's another text. It says we should not despise prophecy. Yeah, Amos chapter 3 verse 7. See what it says. See what God says. It says, surely the Lord will do nothing 
but he will reveal it unto his servants. He will reveal his secret unto his servant, the prophet. So he tells us how God does his things. And this is why prophetic word comes. Before God does something, he will send out signal. So the question is that why is prophecy important? Why is it good, you know, to do that? Number one, we saw because prophecy is going to make you unshakable. It's going to make you unshakable. The first thing is this. Oh, wow. This is very, oh, wow. Someone say thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, help me. Psalm 119 verse 105. I'm trying to build a foundation here. Psalm 119 verse 105. The Bible says, thy word is light unto my feet and lamp unto my part. So, notice this. It said, thy word is lamp unto my feet and is what? Light unto what? My part. Guess what? The word of God is light. Okay? I want to show you something here. Who? Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. And, and now I'm sure I'm turning out the scripture, but I need to lay a good foundation here. Genesis chapter 1 in verse 14. Genesis chapter 1 in verse 14. So, listen to me. The word of God is light. Yes or no? So, the prophetic word is also light. The Bible says in Hebrew chapter 11 verse 3, it says, through faith we understand that the world, the world is the Greek word, aeon. The aeon means the faces, the ages were framed by the word of God. The seasons of life were put together by the word of God. So, let's go back there. I, I'm saying something. I'm going some, somewhere. So, let's go back there. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 verse 14. I want to show you something. So, the word is what? Light. The word is what? Light. The word is what? Light. The Bible says, And God said, Let there be light in the light in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be. Watch this now. What is the light for? For signs and for what? Seasons and for what? Days and for what? Years. What that means that God used light to influence seasons. What is light? The word. So when God wants to change a season, it brings light. That's why day and night is dependent on the movement of what? Of the sun and moon. It's within the rotation of the earth around the sun and moon. That's how we have day, night, and years. That's how we have day, night. So it's light that determines season. So if the word of God is light, so prophetic word determines season. That's what I'm going to. Prophetic word. So, how do I know the season I'm entering into? Watch this now. Someone say it's raining season. You can say that from a human calendar. But how do I know the season I'm entering into? You know the season you are entering into by the prophetic word that God has said. Because the prophetic word will influence the season and create light. Glory to God. I said, Glory to God. No wonder the Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 3, he says that, it says, true faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. We say we understand it. He said, true faith, we understand. He says, the world, the world, the world, the world does not mean globe. Like, the word globe there, it, if it's the world, the world is normally cosmos. It will be like the earth, the earth. The world there means the ages, that the different ages, the different ages. The different ages were framed. Frame means put together. You know, when you say, you frame, you say, for example, you say, put the, let me be in the frame of the picture. Like, arrange it, arrange it. He says, the different ages were framed by the word of God. So what God is saying to you is that the year ahead of you has been framed. But how is it being framed? It's framed by the prophetic word that's gone ahead. This is why the word of God is very important. The prophetic word. Because you can be in a new season and be operating as though you're in an old season. The new iPhone 15 has this new charger. Yes or no? If you use an iPhone and you just bring your charger and you say, they charge my phone, then the phone does not work. You get frustrated. But, like, but this is an iPhone charger. This is my iPhone. It's an iPhone, but the season has changed. So the charger has been upgraded. The question is this. Are you trying to charge your life with the old charger? Or you are walking within the new season? So God sends us a prophetic word to help us know the season we are in. That's why I sense the prophetic word. Look at Elijah. There was a season where they were, there was no rain. When it was time for rain to come, what did God do? God sent Elijah and Elijah told Ahab, he says that there will be rain now. The rain followed the declaration of the prophetic word before the prophetic word released the season. 
The second reason why the word of God is powerful is this. Prophetic word. Prophetic words, so seasons are, so the first reason why prophetic word is important is because seasons are created and adjusted by prophetic words. Seasons are created and adjusted by prophetic So when the Lord says to us, is your year of unstoppable multiplication, you have to understand that the season has changed. Do you have my board here? Bring it. When you understand that the Lord said it's your year of unstoppable multiplication, you have to sit down and be like, hey, I don't want to be using old charger for new iPhone. No. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. The second thing that the word of God does, don't worry, we'll come there. The second thing the, word, the prophetic word does is this. Prophetic word are spiritual tools to expand the borders of our mind. Bring it, bring, 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 sir. Yeah. Prophetic words are spiritual tools to expand the borders of our mind. So God says in this season, he says we have entered into a season of unstoppable what? Multiplication. Let me tell you what multiplication is. This is addition. What is addition? 10 plus 10 equals to what? 20. 20 plus 10 equals to what? 30. 30 plus 10 equals to what? 40 plus 10 equals... This is wonderful. But God says, this is not your season. He said, the season you are in, this is your season. 10 times 10 equals to 100. 100 times 10 equals to what? 1,000. 1,000 times 10 equals to what? 10,000. 10,000 times 10 equals to what? 100,000. 100,000 times 10 equals to 1 million. You cannot compare this and this. I'm saying it to you so that you don't shortchange yourself. So that you don't write goals and prayer points that does not align to your season. Because grace has been made sufficient. Oh my God. Hallelujah. So the second thing that prophetic word does is this. The, prof the word of God as spiritual tools to expand the borders of our mind. And what does that mean? Um... That thing the ushers used to block the road, they would they put it like that stand. Do you have it? There's that thing they used to block. It's over there at the back. I can see it. Can you bring one or two of them for me quickly? This is very powerful. Everybody has a mental border. Everybody has what? A mental border. Borders. You know, every nation has a border. They will say, this is Nigeria and this is what? Togo. That means if you cross from here to here right now, you're in that country. The same way there are physical borders, there are also what? Mental borders. Men borders are meant for restrictions and control. Yeah. Borders are meant for what? Restrictions and control. So when you see this, you can put it down for me. Yeah. When you see this, this is a border. This is a border. This border means you cannot go beyond. You can go what? You can go beyond this. And the reason I'm saying so is that a lot of you are praying for things that mentally you cannot go beyond. I was speaking in a, in a conference the other day and I spoke about, I was trying to minister to some ladies that were single for a long time. And one of the things I realized, and all of you that are single for a long time, pay attention. If you have been praying a lot about your marriage and you have not seen a change, or you are praying a lot about your financial, um, financial state, you've not seen a change, most of the time, it's a mental border you're dealing with. So when we had the sessions, I told them, it was a small meeting. I said, everyone, this weekend or over the next one week, go to a bridal store, take a wedding gown, and wear it. When I said, go and wear it, they didn't know what it was, but I knew what I was doing. The reason why is that if you have been single for a long time, your mindset will shrink to that state. To see something outside, it will become difficult. Let me give another example. If you have been having challenges for a long time, your mindset to become problem mindset to see breakthrough become difficult. That's the reason why in John chapter 4, when Jesus Christ asks the man at the pool of Bethesda, he says, will thou be made whole? Remember the man had been there for 30 and 8 years. He was there before Jesus was born. He says, will thou be made whole? It's a yes or no question. What did the man say? The man says, I have no man to help me. 
The question is not that do you have someone to help you or not. He says, will thou be made whole? Because the problem was no longer physical. It had entered his brain. So what happens to people is that when they have challenges, what they have challenges, there's a mental border. There's a mental border. They are praying, you know, there's a mental border. So I told the ladies to get it. One of the ladies came back and she said, when she going to buy that store, they gave her the size of her, of her wedding gown. As she wanted to wear it, she couldn't. Then she broke down in tears. Then it occurred to her that she could not see herself married. But she has been praying. He said, then it occurred to her that she could not, that as she wanted to wear it, he said, he said, he said, Pastor, not just me, my older sister is not married, my first born is not married. It just, it just occurred to me. He said, I broke down. He said, I sat down and I began to cry. The reason why is that there was a mental boundary. And some of you are here. The, you are praying, but there's a mental boundary. Can I go deeper? If you, listen to me, if you, you are a mentor, and someone comes and removes it for you, and you come out like this. They should give you two months. You will go back yourself. You know why? It's a place you are used to be. You like being that way. You don't want to come out. How do I know this? When the Israelites came out of Egypt, they themselves say, We'll form a captain and go back into slavery. Didn't you read in your Bible? They say, We will form a captain and we will go back into slavery. The reason why is that the slavery was no longer physical. It was mental. They did not know what else to do but to be a slave. And I'm saying so to you today that what, so you know what, when God wants to help you, he sends you a word. The word God sends you is not what you're thinking. It's above what you're thinking. So that's what begins to what? Stretch you. That word begins to stretch you. You know, the reason why is that when I'm thinking on this board and I'm saying, this is what God says my year will be. Humanly possible, I cannot think of this. Ah, that song will be making 1,000 per month. Oh, let me give you a practical figure. Song will be making 100,000 per month. 10,000 per month. And the person will move to 100,000 per month. Song will be making 100,000 per month and move to 1 million. Humanly possible is not possible. Humanly possible, you'll be thinking, what about the economy? What about the prediction? What about dollar? This has now increased. Glory to God. I'm showing you because some of you are like, every church has a word for the year. It's not about every church. It's the fact that God is trying to expand your mental boundary. Borders are the limits on our thinking. But where do borders come from? Borders come from our own experiences. Borders are created by what? Our own experiences. Fennel was giving a testimony the other day. And I knew what the Nigerian government was doing. He, got, he did something and the Nigerian government wrote him and said, we want to be the ambassador or something like that ambassador for nigerians that are in diaspora that done very well and you know what they're doing what they're doing is that the image of nigerians you know is hush puppy is a mental boundary even for people that don't know us they think we are thieves so when you see somebody else you must raise up another image and say don't look like hush puppy look at this the reason why is that the image you see is what you give birth after that was what jacob understood can I be honest with you? Some of you must take your success personal. Not because it's you. You need to open the door for your younger ones. And not just your younger ones, because you might not be the you might even be the youngest. You need to open the door for the family members. The reason why is that your brothers and sisters, uncles and aunties, no people do well, but they don't know anybody in the family that's done well. They don't know anybody in the family that's done well. So when you step out, they will say, Come on. Uh-uh. Ah, uh, ah, uh, come on. Victor, we suck the same breast. Ah. This is no matter. They say, because all the time before now, they say, when someone does, they say, ah, they know somebody, their father, their mother. But you, they know you. That was why when the Spirit of God came on Saul, they said, he saw not, he saw now amongst the prophets, they were shocked. That's why this year you must take it very spiritual. 
If you don't intend to fast, you fast. Because this is not about you. Grieve for nothing. Praise God. Look at them and say, this is not about you. This is not about you. You will increase your borders to an extent that, my God, your children, where they start from, the border is so high. I'll give an example. I heard a story about a family that have two or two private jets. But something happened. The mother went out with one. Then they went to fix the others for repairs. So the children had to take commercial flights. So they flew in first class. As they flew in first class, they looked back and saw the first car coming full. And they looked at their nanny and said, oh, are these also our uncles and aunties? The reason why in their mind, everybody they fly with are related to them. They have never been in a commercial plane experiment. Can you see mental borders? So when they entered the place, the child began to get familiar, thinking that every time we fly in a plane, we're always flying with our friends, uncles, and aunties. Mental borders. Some of you, the problem that you have never seen one million mentally, you have always been talking about it. Uh -huh. You have never seen it. Some of you, the problem is that you have never imagined one billion. And the way it works is that until you break the one billion inside, you can't break it outside. So what does God do? When God wants to help a man, he now sends him a word. So he will tell, he will tell Elizabeth that is 90, I will give you a child. When he says, Elizabeth, I'm like, Elizabeth at 90 had said, I can't have a child. This is a boundary because medical science says that we can what? Have a child. That, that's a boundary. There's a boundary is that at my age, this is not possible. As a single mother, someone in oil and gas that has no connection to the minister or prime minister, that's what you cannot do. So what God does is that God now gives you a word and now says, hey, um, and says what, um, what's the name now? Abraham's wife? Sarah. Sarah, you will have a child. And when he says that you have a child, for the first time, in fact, one time, the prophet of God, Elisha, told the woman, you have a child. The woman knelt down and said, prophet, I know I sowed this seed. I sowed it because I love you. He said, please don't lie to me. Because mentally, she knew what she had gone through. So she could not come to believe she will have a child. But the prophet of God said you will have a child. The word came to extend a mental boundary. You know what I'm saying? So if you're going to see the miraculous, the mental boundary must increase. Praise God. You have a child. So, he, so when say you have a child, what happened to Sarah was this. A mental boundary was increased. Glory to God. Who? Mental bodies are very powerful. Let me close with this and I want us to pray. Did you notice, take note of this, Joseph became the prime minister. Yes or no? What did his brothers become? Tell me. What? Nothing. When Joseph had the dream, he saw what he became, but he also saw what his brothers became. He became what he saw. His brothers did not become anything because although they saw for him, they didn't see for themselves. And that's why when they saw Joseph, they could not recognize him because he had stepped into glory. But when he saw them, he knew they were the ones. They still looked and talked like who they were. Are you here? Are you here? The question was this. Did Joseph, Joseph said he saw himself as a son. Oh, but he saw his brothers as stars. He also said they were not normal people. That they were actually stars. But question. Did he become the son? He became the son. Did his brothers become the star? The brothers did not become the star. Although there was a prophetic dream. They could not manifest. Because they never saw themselves that way. That's what I'm going to. So you never heard that Reuben, this and this did anything. You never heard. The only person that did something was Joseph. Why am I saying this to you? I can see for you. If you don't see for yourself, it's finished. Joseph saw for them. But they, you know, and this is the problem with infinity complex. Instead of them to accept their lot and be like, Father, thank you for what you have said that will be. They started fighting Joseph and say, this is your son. They want to be, you will not become it. In fighting it, they lost their starship. 
And this is why this is very personal. Even though it's a year of unstoppable multiplication, if you don't see for yourself, I'm sorry. Please see. See for yourself. We are fasting and praying now. And the reason why we are fasting and praying, there are dimensions. There are dimensions that we want to step into. Tomorrow, it's starting. You say, I'm waking up late. My brother, you get up. And the first thing is this. And I'm go- that's why I say, you, you know you have to go back to the messages, right? Because I've not told you what you have to do. I've just explained the power of the prophetic word. One of the things you have to do is to meditate. Because meditation rewrites your mental programming. Did you hear what I said? All of you that have software understand what I'm talking about. All of you that have apps understand this. You can have a phone that has an app that has blogs. So they will upgrade it. When they upgrade it, the app will remove the blog, the bugs that are affecting. Yes or no? So some of us have bugs. We have bugs like there are things that our environment has told us. They say, because of dollar, we can't do this. You can't get married. You can't have a child. You can't be spiritual. Some of you say, you can't break free from masturbation. You can't break free from cocaine. You have those things. Say, it's my lifestyle. There's already a bug in your system. There's a bug. What is the bug? The doctors have told you that this kind of sickness, people don't get pregnant from it. What is a bug? They've said you cannot get this cancer will lead to death. What is a bug? Someone at your age can never find that kind of funding. Someone from your background can never do a certain kind of thing. That is a bug. It's a bug that's entered into your thinking. So what do you do? What do you do when there's a bug in an app? They produce an upgrade. That upgrade will automatically fix the bug. Question, how do I upgrade myself is meditation. Meditation is a spiritual technology to rewrite a mental program to take you to the next level. Meditation is a spiritual technology to rewrite a mental program. So, if you have been programmed wrongly, meditation will rewrite you. Meditation. Meditation will rewrite you. Because the truth is this. It's difficult for any human being to believe that this is possible. Very difficult. We are used to this one. But what God did not say is that I'm adding to you. He says I'm multiplying you. They told me chapter 1 verse 10 and 11. Let's read and we'll close. Chapter 10 and verse 11. What's meditation? This meditation. Let me tell you what meditation is. You will go, when you wake up in the morning, you will look at the Bible. Read that place again. Not read the Bible, that place. You will put your name there. You will close your eyes and see it happen to you. You will begin to jump and shout and say, this is my reality. See what the Bible says. Let's read together. I want to go. The Lord has multiplied you. And behold, you are this day as the stars of heaven for multitude. Verse 11. He said, the Lord has already multiplied you. Wonderful. It says, verse 11. The Lord God of your father now make you a thousand times much more as you are and bless you as he has promised. It's difficult to comprehend that this is the Bible because I did not write it. It says the Lord make you a thousand times more. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your future. It doesn't matter where dollar gets to this year. It doesn't matter who's married divorces. It doesn't matter who does not have a child. We have a more sure word of prophecy. We have something to hold on to. So the first thing we do is meditate. The second thing we prevent in prayer. The reason why is this. Bet, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Bet responds to conception and travail. Did you hear what I said? When you have a prophecy, as you begin to meditate, you prevent in prayer. The reason why is that Every birth responds to conception. So through meditation we conceive. In prayer we travail so that that which we conceive come out. Pai kusa mataya. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm hungry. There are things I want to see. There are things my heart is desiring. There are things I'm praying about. You must point at me and say, God, why are you unfair? Shall we pray? Oh, Samantha Kabbalah. 
If you need space, come to the altar and come and pray. Then you can, if you need space, come, just carry your phone and back. Come to that, come and pray. Someone be on the drums. The next three minutes, that's all you have. In the various centers, you come to center, come and pray. The next three minutes, oh yeah, open fire. Pastor de Pastor I get the microphone. Shake up a loot up a rat See like a Oh, yes, Jesus, Jesus, in jesus name we pray wow please just indulge me one more minute one of when we say multiplications i would read it in a hurry but in the next services and during the midweek this first wednesday these are first Wednesdays. with holy ghost power will follow mighty this wednesday mighty we're already in wine press so in case you have not sensed it we have entered though uh-huh so that when others come you will have taken over yeah that's why the wine press of this year i'm expecting multiplication amen what there are seven dimensions of multiplication i will read it i want us to preach just for one or two number one multiplied spiritual encounters number two multiplied grace number three multiplied growth number four multiplied resources number five multiplied influences number six multiplied wisdom number seven multiplied help the one we're going to pray about today is this multiplied spiritual encounter once a man changes everything around him will change Lift up your voice and pray. Multiply spiritual encounters. Multiply spiritual encounters. Divide counters with your God. Make all shut on a post of Braco Shetelebote. Braca Shate Cote. Multiply spiritual encounters, O God. Shut up, Baba Baba Baba. He cast the man, he cast the men. Reki Catepe, Coast of Belakaya. Rapetelebote, he cast the man. Jesus' name we pray. There's a last prayer point. He says, I will go before you and make the crooked way straight. I pray for everyone today that the Ashabaya, that Yahweh, 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 he will go before you into this year yes, yes. and make every crooked path straight. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Every barrier in your part is shattered. 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 Amen. In the name of the Lord Amen. Jesus, He says, I will go before thee. Before you go into anything, Jehovah will go before you. Amen. Yahweh will go before Amen. you. Every 
crookedness is made straight. Amen. Every barrier goes is made straight. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Every barrier is removed. Amen. This year, open doors. Amen. Open doors. Amen. For marriage. Amen. For encounters. Amen. For grace. Amen. For influence. Amen. For promotion. Amen. For finances. Amen. For salvation. Amen. For cities. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The art Tony get leke porate mampala Yesu preke tava aya shile ke bodo bosaya esonta gora baya imambro ko presente le baya etopolo put your hands on your chest put your right hand on your chest and get the letter I get over said this year this year is my year is my year of unstoppable multiplication of unstoppable multiplication said this year this year is my year is of my year of unstoppable of unstoppable multiplication multiplication doors are open unto me doors are open unto me multiplied grace multiplied grace multiplied wisdom multiplied wisdom multiplied encounters multiplied encounters multiplied help multiplied Multiply resources. He's my portion. He's my portion. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank him, everyone. Everyone, thank him. Thank him. Make it the cost of Rabo, the Kale Bosch, the bed, he came the key cost of As the priest over this assembly, I lift up my hands over you. And I declare in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ that no evil, no struggle of the past you will carry into this year. I lift up my hands over you that this year your health will not fail. Amen. This year your health will not fail. Amen. This year, nothing connected to you that is working will die. Amen. This year, financial doors open for Amen. you. This year, the miraculous open for you. Amen. This year, your career opens up. Amen. Your business opens Amen. up. Marriage opens Amen. up. Amen. Funding opens up. Amen. Approval opens up. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Oh, shout I receive it. I receive it. Shout I receive it. I receive it. Shout I receive it. I receive it. Everyone looking for a child. This year you carry your Amen. child. This year your business moves into higher realms of finances. Amen. Everyone that is believing for marriage. This year is your year of testimony. Amen. Every sickness connected to you dies right Amen. now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Every approval you have been looking for is released. Shout, I receive it. I receive it. Say grace. Say grace. Say grace. Say this is my story. This is my story. I receive it. I receive it. Thank you. My God. Such a strong anointing. Hallelujah. All eyes closed, all let's bow. If you don't know Christ, I would love to pray for you. Anywhere you are, raise up your right hand. Start this year with Jesus. Anywhere you are, raise up your right hand. You don't have to come out. Raise up. Thank you, my sister. Thank you, the lady over there. Thank you, the brother at the back. Anywhere you are, raise up your right hand. Say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I want to start afresh with you. I believe the message that you died for me. And you were raised from the dead for my justification. And today, I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I receive the gift of eternal life and righteousness. According to your word, I believe that I am now born again. Thank you, Holy Father. 